Her hair was different that first morning, uneven. Her long blonde curls, which usually fell to both shoulders, and now only touched one. Oh my god, Abby. What did you do to your hair? My wife Erica said, prompting me to look up from my bowl of oatmeal and see that our little girl's hair had changed. Abby stood groggily by the fridge, rubbing the sleep from her eyes. I just woke up. You cut your hair, Erica said. No, I didn't. Nick, look at her. I smirked. I see. I didn't cut my hair, Abby protested. Go look in the mirror, Erica said. Abby did as she was told and from the bathroom cried. My hair! And then she came rushing back with tears in her eyes. Somebody cut my hair! Erica and I exchanged glances and then I said to Abby, You really didn't cut it yourself. No. Erica put a comforting hand on Abby's back and said, Okay, okay, let's go fix it. Erica was able to even up Abby's hair and make her presentable enough for school. And after dropping Abby off at the school bus, came home and said, You think she's lying? Well, it wasn't you or me, so yeah, I said as I adjusted my tie. Did you check her room for hair? No. Erica gaped at me. Nick. I shrugged. What? This is in forensic files. Our daughter cut her hair. It'll grow back. She's probably embarrassed, that's all. What if she didn't, though? I turned and smiled and ran my fingers through the thinning hair on my own head. Then I guess she takes after me. Erica frowned. Nick, that's not funny. She's six. I leaned forward and kissed Erica. I know, don't worry. I'm sure there's a lock of hair in the trash upstairs. We'll talk when I get home. Erica stepped aside and said, Okay, have a good day. That evening, I came home to find Erica still upset. There wasn't any hair, she said. Maybe she flushed it. Erica sighed. What if she's sleepwalking? She's never before. Well, she's only been walking for like five years. I smiled. True. We should get her tested. For sleepwalking? Yeah, you know, like a sleep study. She's fine, Erica. She cut it herself. You never tried to cut your hair as a kid. Erica shrugged. I guess. And it ended up looking terrible, didn't it? Erica smiled. Well, yeah. I didn't know what I was doing back then. Exactly. And I'm sure you were very embarrassed. Just like Abby. Alright, fine. I get it. Just do me a favor and talk to her and make sure she doesn't do it again. I stood from the sofa and placed my hands over my heart and playfully announced, With God as my witness, our daughter will not cut another hair from her head, and then swiveled on my heel and exaggeratedly marched up the stairs. Godspeed, Sir Nick, Erica laughed. Abby was lying on her bed flipping through a copy of Green Eggs and Ham when I walked over and stood in the doorway. Permission to enter, I said. Permission granted, she said, rehearsed and repeated time and time again. Well, thank you, my lady. I walked over and sat next to her on the bed. Ah, Green Eggs and Ham, a fine piece of literature. You can stop talking like that. Talking like what? I said in the same tone, This is how I sound. Abby dropped the book onto her lap and rolled her eyes, and as she did, a mosquito landed square onto her forehead. Don't move, I said, 
and carefully moved my hand to her forehead and gently popped it. Ow! She cried. Why did you do that? I should have had a V8. What? I smiled and showed her the squashed mosquito on my hand. Ew, that was on me? Yep, he came by to check out your new haircut. Abby frowned. I don't like it. That'll grow back. I know, but still, it's ugly. I set her book on the nightstand and pulled her covers up to her chest and said, It's impossible for you to look ugly. Promise? Promise. I leaned over and kissed your forehead and then playfully grimaced and said, Ew, mosquito-y. Abby giggled and I stood and noticed a warm breeze blowing from the nearby window. I walked over and saw it cracked open a few inches. Did you open your window? I asked. No. I peeked outside and seeing nothing but the orange glow from the neighbor's house lights, shut the window, locked it, and drew the curtains. Must have been mom, I said and walked to the doorway. Sleep tight. And don't let the mosquitoes bite. And don't cut your hair. Dad... I know, I know, but still, don't. I won't. Very good, milady. I said in my tone that she hated. Abby sighed and I followed up with, Love you. Um, love you too. I found Erica already in bed and after brushing my teeth, joined her and asked, Did you open Abby's window? Uh, I don't think so, why? It was open. I don't know why I would have. It's so hot out. I sat there for a moment thinking and then said, Well, good night. And then kissed Erica and turned off the lamp. Nick, wake up. I opened my eyes to see Erica standing over me. I rolled over. It's Saturday. It happened again. I rolled back over. What? Her hair, it's been cut. I sighed and kicked off the covers. How bad this time? Bad. We walked over to Abby's bedroom. She was sitting on the bed, the left side of her hair cut to above her ear, the other side at yesterday's chin length, and she was sobbing. I walked over and said, Abby, what happened? I didn't do it. Well, who did? I don't know. Well, somebody had to have done it, and it wasn't mom or me. Abby pounded on the bed and screamed. It wasn't me. I looked at Erica, and then she said, oh, We're getting her tested. Fine. I stood and nodded at the doorway, and Erica met me in the hall. Are the scissors still in her bathroom? No, I took them out yesterday and I hid them. She must have another pair. I stared past Erica and she asked, What? I pointed at the wall and she turned around. Oh, Nick, squash it before it stings one of us. A wasp. I stepped into Abby's room and pulled the curtains. And sure enough, the window was open. I feel like we're using her as bait. Erica said she stood at the bottom of the ladder, watching me install a camera in the corner of Abby's room. No, we're going to figure out which one of us is sleepwalking. Abby said she doesn't have another pair of scissors, and she doesn't know where you hit the others, so it's got to be one of us. You don't know where I hid them either. I didn't answer and I kept working on the camera. Wait, you think that I'm the sleepwalker? I didn't say that. I'm the only one who knows where the scissors are, so if you don't think it's Abby, then you must think that it's me. I looked at Erica. Let's be honest, you're the only one here who went to cosmetology school. What's that supposed to mean? It makes sense that you would cut hair while sleepwalking. I'm not a sleepwalker. We'll see. If anybody's sleepwalking, it's you. I sighed. 
Jesus Christ, Erica. First, you were saying that it's Abby and now it's me. You talk in your sleep sometimes. Well, talking and walking are two different things. It's more than I've ever done in my sleep. I tightened the final screw and then stepped down the ladder. Well, we're going to find out now, aren't we? Erica shook her head. Whatever, I just don't want this to go on any longer. Abby's running out of hair. The following morning, Erica and I got out of bed together and crept into Abby's room and carefully pulled the covers from her face. Erica cried out and put her hand to her mouth. Patches of hair were missing from the left side of Abby's head, and the window was open. Erica and I rushed back to our bedroom and grabbed my phone and played the recorded footage from the previous night. For the first few hours, Abby was sleeping, occasionally tossing and turning, but nothing out of the ordinary. We fast-forwarded further into the night, and then there was a slight movement by the window. The curtains fluttered as if from a light breeze, and then an arm extended through the curtain and felt around the surrounding area, and then disappeared back outside. A second or two passed and a head poked through, followed by a torso and then legs, and then in almost complete silence, a woman in her entirety had slithered into my daughter's room. Erica gasped and squeezed my arm. Next, the woman stood. The footage was black and white, so it was difficult to determine the exact color of her hair, but it was dark and straight and fell to her waist. Her outfit, some sort of long gown, was equally dark, and her feet looked to be bare. She sidled over to Abby and stood staring at her, and then reached into her gown and took out a bottle and a rag. She unscrewed the top of the bottle and pressed the rag to it, tilted it, and then screwed the lid back on and returned the bottle to her gown. And then she leaned over Abby and held the rag over her mouth for several seconds. She returned the rag to her gown and took out a pair of scissors and began cutting. When she finished, she put the scissors away and stood with the hair that she had cut from Abby in her palm. And then she ate it. She shoved my daughter's stolen curls into her mouth and chewed, and when she had finished, she licked her hand clean of any remaining hairs. Then she turned from Abby and walked to the window and then stopped. She turned her head and looked directly at the camera. Her dark hair hung over her face. She stepped toward the camera and passed it, and into the hall. I fast-forwarded the footage. Every minute up to the moment Erica and I checked on Abby, the woman never went back. Erica, I whispered, she might still be in the house. We both turned and sprinted down the hall yelling for Abby, and when we made it to her room we found her lying beneath the covers asleep. We both breathed a sigh of relief and stepped into her room. Abby, wake up, Erica said and pulled the covers away. God, she gasped and stumbled backward. The woman was lying in the bed, chewing, blonde hair poking from between her lips. Call the police, I told Erica and tossed her my phone as I rushed over and yanked the woman from the bed and pinned her to the floor. Where's my daughter? The woman kept chewing. Behind me, Erica was on the phone, frantically crying to the dispatcher. She did something to our daughter. Please, you have to come now. No, we don't know who she is. Please, just hurry. Erica, check the footage, I said, and then turned my attention back to the woman and said, Tell me where she is. The woman stopped chewing, stared into my eyes, and then opened her mouth to reveal a wet clump of hair on her tongue. I wrapped my hands around her throat and squeezed. You psycho, I yelled. Nick! Erica gasped. She's in the closet. I spun around in time to see Erica yank the closet doors open and see Abby blue in the face, hanging limp from a tie knotted around her neck. At that same moment, I felt a sharp pain in my side and looked to see that the woman had stabbed me. 
I cried out in pain and pushed off her as she pulled the scissors from me. And then she quickly leaped to her feet and sprinted for the open window and vaulted out. Abby, Erica cried, having gotten her untied and on the floor. I crawled over and reached a bloodied hand to Abby's neck. She's got a pulse, I said and saw the color returning to her face. She's breathing too. In the background, we could hear approaching sirens. Abby and I both made a full recovery. From the footage we saw, the woman had crept into Abby's bedroom after Erica and I had gone back to our room that morning. Abby was still asleep at the time and the woman had chloroformed her again and then cut her hair and dragged her to the closet and then hung her with a tie that she had taken from my closet, most likely during the night. The window, as it turns out, never actually locked. It was a faulty design that we were unaware of and never thought to check. The good news is that Abby's hair has grown back, as I assured her that it would. We've also moved to a new house, one with windows that properly lock. The bad news, however, is that the police never found the woman. They searched the house for DNA and found some but couldn't match it to anyone. Nobody recognizes her either, from what they've told me. But she's out there and she has her scissors with her. And it's only a matter of time before she sneaks through somebody else's window and cuts their hair. And eats it. <laughs>